Have you ever wondered if you could live full-time as a nomad? Today, we're answering that question here at Jill's Nomad Survival. So I'm Jill. I consider myself a nomad and I've been doing this for going on six years now officially I believe August 12th and so I thought I would go over some information about is a full-time nomadic life for you and that includes if you're in an RV a trailer a van or just a backpack I've done the trailer and the backpack not the van maybe someday but the principles are the same and so I thought I would just cover some general topics I'm not going to talk about the type of vehicle I've done that in another video which I'll have in the link below so the big question is is the, is the full-time nomad life for you so the big question is, is the nomadic life for you? And so I want to just go over some basic stuff that whether you have or haven't thought about will kind of help you sort it out. First, there's different types of ways of doing this. One is just full time. You get rid of everything. You pack it into something that drives away or you carry on your back you're done so that's full-time there's full-time with home base or base camp which is what I like to call it which means you still have a central place that you can return to you have your mail you have friends you have some support system there your bank all these little things that uh, are very much important in terms of factoring in but you're out and about but come back to one place some people buy like three plots of land and they just travel between those plots so that's kind of the same idea the other type is part-time where you just have home and then you go out in a RV or a trailer or you can do it uh, full-time temporary is this going to be a full-time thing for the long term or is this going to be full-time for just the temporary I left for a year it's been six years never knew I'd like it so much uh, I am personally biased towards this type of life but I will tell you it is not for everybody so that's really the first thing to think about what is your idea about this type of nomadic experience the next thing I would ask myself if I was you doing it in hindsight is why are you doing it and there's a lot of different reasons in the same way there's a lot of different types of being a nomad but first what is the why I really came to this because I was in the middle of losing everything I didn't know where I wanted to live so my idea was well I'll just downsize travel for a year figure out where I want to rebuild my life and go from there so mine was a combination of the need to make a decision because I was losing my house and two not really knowing what the future was going to hold so it was a temporary fix for a long-term problem uh, now so the question that you really need to ask yourself is are you doing it because you're going to be a victim you know if you're looking at it you know poor me I have to move into a trailer <laughs> are you doing it because you want an adventure are you doing this full-time nomad because you don't know what to do some people are just seeking simplicity they really want to downsize and I'm a big fan of downsizing in your 40s 50s and 60s while you still can and not waiting until it's too late are you thinking about retirement and this will be your long-term retirement plan are you wanting to just travel and experience the world are you planning on working or are you planning on living off retirement or saving so the biggest uh, thing about why is it's important to know why you're doing it because that's really going to be the way that you let your experience and your adventure shape you it's also going to determine the experiences that you have out on the road which gets us into the next subject of expectations versus the realities I'm not exactly sure what kind of expectations I had um, I like you I watched a bunch of videos at the time there weren't as many as there are now um, and I think I, you know like I said I don't really know what I expected I had a visual in my mind I was going to go to farms and learn how to farm and hopefully settle someplace where I could be part of a working farmer ranch and an off-grid environment I, ironically I'm kind of in that now with a very different point of view so the expectations you know run the gamut a lot of people I think nowadays 
have this expectation because they've seen all these videos and they think, you know, everybody's out having a good time in their RV or their trailer or in their van life. I think that's the big one. I wouldn't go back to my old life. So I, I love it. But that, that the expectations also will be met with a lot of realities. And I think the realities that I was really hit upside the head with are how much uncertainty there is. Um, I would say, you know, of the six years, the first three years, I was really struggling. It took me uh, some traveling, a lot of bad experiences to get some uh, confidence under my feet to know that I could handle the bad experiences. Um, I was pretty traumatized at one point with everything that was happening and I didn't know what to do. And that's when I landed in a situation for about a year that allowed me to basically heal because you know between losing the house and getting rid of everything and all the crisis around that and then the stress of traveling it took me you know a good year to get my feet back under me so uh, it's not a simple thing you know some people transition very easily a lot of it depends on you know what your plan is how much money you have uh, my goal was to find a home so i really struggled with a lot of the disappointment about not getting my expectations met. So that's why I think expectations are really important. But so I would say the number one reality is there is so much uncertainty. The other things, you know, I'm gonna throw at you, you know, an example is last night, probably some of the biggest winds we've ever had. And the weather report said two inch hail was coming with the lovely uh, warning of stuff will be damaged, animals will be hurt. And so, there's nothing you can do. I'm not in a situation where I can pick up and just move every time there's a bad weather situation. So, uh, you know, the the reality is, you know, the uncertainty, you're kind of a victim of the elements because it's almost like you're living outside. For me, it's very much like I'm living outside. So there's not a lot of control over what's happening to me in the environment. Um, I'm very much, it's very loud, it's scary, the whole thing shakes. Uh, I feel a little more vulnerable in a trailer. I had a friend who, who only emailed this, I haven't talked to him, where he got hit by lightning uh, two feet from his feet destroyed his trailer and somebody else was killed in their trailer with lightning. So you are much closer to the elements. You have to like the outdoors or you'll go crazy. Uh, and probably the third or the last thing I would really toss out there in terms of some of the realities I was not expecting is how time intensive it is. I spend a long time every day just doing the basics. Now I live very uh, simply, simply and without a lot of of amenities. Um, so my uh, my daily life requires me to do many hours of basic work every day. But when you live in a small space, regardless, whether it's a tiny house or whatever, it just takes more time because you're always having to kind of move one thing and do another thing. There's not a lot of storage, which makes it an issue of your stuff. Uh, you spend a lot of time messing with your stuff, trying to get to what you need, what you don't need. So there's a much more time intensive factor. But, you know, my personal uh, experience has been the trade off is okay. So I may be more physically uncomfortable more of the time than I was in a house and a traditional lifestyle, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, I'm so much happier versus, you know, I was more physically comfortable in a house, but the stress of the money and the upkeep and the, you know, maintenance and things like that was much more uh, of a, a negative for me. So that was sort of the way I, I look at it. I'm okay with the physical discomfort and there is quite a bit. <laughs> That is just true versus, you know, being in a house. So those are just a few things to think about in terms of expectations versus the reality. The next thing you have to really answer or ask yourself is where are you going? Are you going to live in a city, in the suburb, kind of small city, urban area, uh, out on the road where you're constantly moving or a uh, small town, rural America, which is really where I prefer and settle, have settled into is a more rural environment where I live just out on people's dirt lots, that kind of thing. And the reason that's important is that's gonna make a big difference in terms of all the other experiences that you have. You know, if you're in a big city, it's easy to get to laundry. If you're not, not so much. I have to go over 50 miles just to get basic grocery. So there's, it makes a difference in terms of where you're gonna be, in terms of how that's going to impact your experience in this nomadic lifestyle. 
So the biggest issues I've come across, I would say, the, the, probably the number one is making money, which is really difficult to do uh, if you don't have a permanent address, because a lot of times people think that you're going to be only someplace temporarily. So if you're trying to look for work out in the community, there's some uh, uncertainty around you. There's some uncertainty around, are you going to be in it? You know, are you worth training? Uh, time management is a huge issue. Things like, you know, getting mail, getting set up with a bank, having an address, being an official and legitimate person, uh, driver's license, car insurance, all those kinds of things are more complicated when you live this way. That's why I've really settled kind of on a home base full-time model because even though I know I don't want to live forever in this town, I will stay connected to it until I find my next small town to sort of establish as my home base. Uh, one of the, the, probably the biggest reason, or one of the biggest reasons I stopped uh, so much traveling was because, I have to be honest, I got tired of starting over with myself and my experiences with other people and telling my story. Because every time you move, you're basically starting over telling your story again. I was tired of telling my story. I wanted some consistency. Uh, this is a very inconsistent lifestyle. The, you know, In my list of benefits here, I'll tell you one of the benefits of this type of life versus the backpack, so the van, the trailer, or the RV, is your inside life and routine never changes. So even though the external uh, life changes, the inside doesn't, which is great for the animals because their routine stays the same, you know, their food, their sleeping arrangements, the, the routines of the day, which I personally prefer. When I backpacked through Europe, backpack, it was always different and it was always stressful having to stay in other people's environment. So I liked having my home go, I like having my home go with me because it allows me to be consistent. I will tell you though, uh, there is a fascination with what you're doing and people will just look in your windows just to see what it is that you're doing. <laughs> it makes having a social life a bit of a challenge too. Uh, the space is small. It depends on what kind of rig or whatever you're going with. And the elements really dictate, you know, if someone wants to come over, they have to be able to stay outside and pee outside because they are not coming inside to do that. So uh, it's a, you have to, it has some definite challenges, you know, on your social life. Uh, logistics, things like that. So oh, I'm going to say one more thing about the negatives. If you're in bad weather, it is so boring because you're in this tiny little space. And I repeatedly would see people in the RV parks with all their windows closed and their shades drawn with the air conditioner or the heater on full blast. And I assume just sitting around and watching television. If that's the way you spend your time, I'm going to tell you right now, don't bother with this lifestyle. If you don't like to be outside, then this is not the lifestyle for you. <laughs> Uh, less responsibility. My personal favorite, if you don't like what's going on around you, you just get in the car and drive away. My personal record was 45 minutes to be packed up and out of there. It was a job situation that did not work out. It was awesome to be able to jump in the car and drive away. I cannot stress that enough. If you like change, if you like uh, changes of scenery, if you are comfortable with uncertainty, if you like challenges, if you're a problem solver and not a, if your response to problems and issues is just sort of collapse and need help, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, one of the things that I love about this tiny space is I can fix almost everything myself. Um, I can climb on the roof, I can climb underneath, I can learn to do almost everything, which makes me feel much more empowered than being in a house where, you know, if the roof needs to get fixed, I can't do that and it's very expensive. So I like being contained. I like feeling like I have more control over my environment. I like having a lot less to take care of. Right now I've got the two cars and the two trailers and it's driving me crazy because it's more than I can deal with in any given situation. Like last night when the hail is coming and I'm looking at both cars and both trailers going, <laughs> I can't get them moved fast enough uh, there's not even enough room in the barn to get everything moved under there. So I'm not as happy with the situation I have right now, but I'm in transition as I move from this smaller trailer into the other, which is part of the other advice I'll give you is even if you think you wanted to do it full time, I would not invest a lot of money on the front end because um, even now, six years later, I'm still making lists of things that I want to do to change 
when I move over into that other trailer. So it's going to be a learning curve and whether it is or it isn't for you, the least amount of money that you can put into in the beginning, I really recommend because if you love it, then you'll know what you want for the next round. If you hate it, you'll get out and you won't feel so bad. <laughs> this last section are just a few recommendations I'm going to give you and the number one recommendation I would give to you is have social skills when you live in this little tiny environment you're very much dependent on interacting with other people and I have just seen over and over and over again a lot of people living this life they don't have good social skills and it gets them into a lot of trouble so even if that's not something that you're comfortable with you need to plant that as a seed because even if it's your goal to live in a trailer out in the middle of nowhere all by yourself, you're going to need help and you're going to need to be able to interact with people. And if you're traveling, you're going to be interacting with a lot of different kinds of people much more often. So having uh, comfort or learning to be comfortable with other people is probably the number one thing. I would say that you really need to focus on. The other recommendations, like I said, is you know, you have to like being a problem solver. You have to be willing to live with the consequences. You know, last night when I was waiting for the window to break, I thought, you know, I would still rather have something like that than, you know, to be in a great big house with the stress, the ongoing stress of that. So you have to understand that there are consequences of this life, but you're willing to deal with those over the consequences of maybe having your whole house slide down the side of a mountain. I would, re I would recommend having money saved before you start as much as you can. There's always unforeseen expenses. Um, I actually live so cheaply right now it would uh, make your hair fall out, but I will talk about money on another day. But I started off with a good nest egg, which I went through fairly quickly. So you, I would really recommend having money. Also, I would tell you that just expect there to be a learning curve. I mean, I mean, I was like shaking. I lost 10 pounds. I think the first two weeks I was so nervous I couldn't eat. I guess it's a good diet plan um, until I saw this little old lady hooking and unhooking by herself and I'm like you know if she can do it I can do it. Constantly telling myself people are always doing this. This is not new. It's only frustrating and scary for me. So as you go through time you will get more and more confident about what you're doing. Uh, this other one is big is always have a next plan in place before you uh, need to leave. So wherever you settle for however, however long you settle, always know what you're going to do next because even though you own your little trailer, you're never going to probably own the land that you're parked on. You never know what's going to come up or when you will be asked to leave or you will say, I want to leave. So that's my one of my other big things. Always have a second plan or next plan in place. And lastly, you know, I'm a big go for it. You know, like I said, there's a diff there's a lot of different ways to be a nomad. And, you know, some people do it because they love travel, they love adventure, they love, love new experiences. Other people, you know, like me are more reclusive. I wanted to be out in nature. I wanted to be away from people. I wanted to be as private as I could. And I've really managed to achieve that, you know, more accidentally than anything else. And so there's all types of, of differences. But one of the big things, you know, I would share is there's, is you kind of have to decide, like I said, you have to decide why you're doing it, but also how you want to still be part of the community and part of the conversation. I think that part of the negative, uh, I would say that a lot of the negative uh, perceptions, because there's a lot of negative perceptions about people who live, because technically you are homeless, and boy, that's a whole eye-opening experience in and of itself. But, but you can make the decision whether you want to be part of a community or be part of a culture or part of something. And I really encourage you to think that way, um, regardless of what it is. You know, I've really found my little niche here in terms of being part of small towns. I think there's a huge uh, future for small towns and nomads to, to rediscover that relationship that they've had since the beginning of time. Um, but there's also a lot of people who just, you know, want to hang out and hide in trailer parks or who sort of have this fantasy travel. I think, you know, one of the biggest negatives I see about sort of the fantasy travel is that you don't really have purpose. Um, and so a lot of, I think that's a big, uh, 
I would say that's sort of a big illusion that you'll see on videos and people with travel blogs and things like that. I'm sure some people are very happy, but it's actually a very kind of hollow experience to just walk around and look at places without having some connection or some purpose. So um, I really caution people to think that they're moving into some kind of ego-based pleasure seeking, idyllic, I'm just going to travel and indulge myself kind of lifestyle. While there are people who do enjoy that, I'm not an advocate of seeking that as your primary purpose. I really believe that this type of life, which allows you to be flexible and adaptable and creative and much more able to quickly uh, adapt to new situations will be the wave of the future as we have lots and lots of more changes. And you know, the reality is, is I've done all my downsizing. I never will regroup again with a lot of stuff. I did all the hard work. I got all my junk. Like how much stuff do we collect over a lifetime? Got it out of the way. And now it's just about fine tuning and refining how I want to be in the world. And there's a lot of good for me in that. But I will say again, this is not for everybody, <laughs> but it's definitely worth trying. So that's a little bit about more to think about is this full-time nomad life for you. I will be making more videos on how to survive this fabulous experience. And with that, whoops, we'll see you, before I say we'll see you next time. Also in the link below, because none of this is free. I've written a little book called Jill's Guide to Getting Ready for Your for as you get older and really what that is is that's just a basic overview of how to prepare yourself environmentally meaning your house your car your city all the things that aren't finances and health care really it's aimed at people 45 to 65 ish or anyone who's going to be caretaking a parent or a grandparent it's really an important process to to put yourself in that mindset to figure out what you need so that you can save money avoid regret including if you want to go the rv lifestyle um, keep control of your life hopefully stay out of a nursing home but it's a way that i feel like i can fund this journey and these videos and give you something positive in return so that is my exchange with you it's like to say buy once watch forever everybody wins and with that we'll see you next time